World Trade Center is a 2006 American survival disaster drama film directed by Oliver Stone and based on the September 11, 2001 attacks at the World Trade Center. It stars Nicolas Cage, Maria Bello, Michael Peña, Maggie Gyllenhaal, Stephen Dorff and Michael Shannon. The film was shot between October 2005 and February 2006, and released on August 9, 2006. Topic. Plot On September 11, 2001, Port Authority police officers John McLaughlin and Will Jimeno are patrolling the Port Authority bus terminal in Midtown Manhattan when they see a plane fly dangerously low overhead. As all of the police return to the station, they see on TV that the North Tower of the World Trade Center has been hit by the plane. Sergeant McLaughlin assigns many of the officers to assist in a precautionary evacuation attempt of the North Tower and they board a Metropolitan Transit Authority bus. On the bus, they hear reports that the South Tower is also hit by another plane. When they arrive at the World Trade Center, they realize the extent of the disaster, and see one of the victims jump out of the towers to certain death. The men proceed to get safety equipment from Building 5 and enter the concourse between the towers. The group consists of McLaughlin, Jimeno, Dominic Pizzullo and Antonio Rodriguez. Officer Christopher Amoroso appears to inform them of other events, such as the attack on the Pentagon, the second plane's hit on the South Tower and an attack on Israel though the group does not accept any of these as true. As the men prepare to enter the North Tower, the buildings begin to rumble. McLaughlin realizes that the South Tower is collapsing onto them and that their only chance of survival is to run into the service elevator shaft. Amoroso trips and does not have time to get up, and Rodriguez is unable to get to the shaft in time, resulting in both deaths. McLaughlin, Jimeno and Pizzullo manage to escape the huge amounts of dust and rubble flying down from the South Tower. However, as the rubble continues to crush the elevator shaft, the three are trapped. As the cascade of debris subsides, Pizzullo realizes he can free himself and manages to move nearer to Jimeno in order to shift the debris covering his legs, but cannot make it to McLaughlin as he is trapped deeper in the rubble. Pizzullo tries but fails to shift the debris due to its weight, and is instructed by McLaughlin not to leave. As Pizzullo becomes optimistic that they will live, the rumbling begins again as the North Tower starts to collapse. Although Jimeno and McLaughlin are not further harmed, Pizzullo is fatally injured when a concrete slab falls into the hole, crushing his torso. After he fires a gun through a gap in the rubble to try to alert rescuers to their position, he dies. Jimeno and McLaughlin spend hours under the rubble, in pain but exchanging stories about their lives and families. McLaughlin is particularly anxious to keep Jimeno from falling asleep and Jimeno also realizes that by straining to grab a metal bar above his body, he can make a noise that rescuers might hear. Two United States Marines, Dave Carnes and Jason Thomas, who are searching for survivors, do hear it and find the men, calling for help to dig them out. Jimeno is rescued first, and then hours later McLaughlin is lifted out of the debris, barely alive and in critical condition. They are then both reunited with their distraught families at the hospital. Two years after the attacks, McLaughlin and Jimeno attend a barbecue with their families, McLaughlin's wife Donna, Jimeno's wife Allison, daughter Bianca, and their newest addition Olivia. The epilogue states that John and Will were two of the 20 people pulled out alive and are now retired from active duty. Dave Carnes re-enlisted in the Marines. Topic Cast Topic Production The Port Authority police officers portrayed by Cage and Peña, John McLaughlin and Will Jimeno, and their wives, played by Bello and Gyllenhaal, were involved with the writing and overall production. McLaughlin and Jimeno said they wanted to have a film made to honor their rescuers and comrades who died on September 11, not for personal gain, McLaughlin's wife Donna has said, We got involved because we felt it needed to be done accurately. 
we wanted to do the right thing and I think the filmmakers wanted to do the right thing too. Both John McLaughlin and Will Jimeno appear at the end of the film during the barbecue scene. The real ESU Emergency Services Unit police from New York who are depicted in the film, Scott Strauss and Paddy McGee, were on set as technical advisors. In addition, the firemen in the film were played by real FDNY members who served on 9-11. All of them enthusiastically supported the film and its intention to accurately portray the rescue of McLaughlin and Jimeno. Jeanette Pizzullo, the widow of Port Authority police officer Dominic Pizzullo, who died in the attacks and is played by Jay Hernandez in the film, expressed anger with the film, criticizing McLaughlin's and Jimeno's participation in its production. She's quoted as saying, My thing is, this man died for you. How do you do this to his family? Staten Island resident Jamie Amoroso, whose husband also died during the rescue operation, also expressed her anger over the film and said she did not need a movie to tell her what a hero her husband was. Many major American newspapers ran editorials accusing Stone of having his film examine 9-11 conspiracy theories because Stone was known for examining various conspiracy theories surrounding the Kennedy assassination in JFK. However, Stone has stated that the film does not explore the conspiracy theories surrounding 9-11. He, the producers, and the real McLaughlin and Jimeno, have said the film is a simple dedication to the heroism and sadness of the day with little to no political themes. The film has been accused of not providing a fair portrayal of the character and motives of rescuer Dave Carnes and paramedic Chuck Seraika. They did not participate in the making of the film and felt their roles of being the first rescuers to reach the trapped men did not receive enough screen time. Seraika began treating and extricating Jimeno a full 20 minutes before officers from the New York City Police Department's Emergency Services Unit arrived. Non-fictional characters John McLaughlin graduated from the State University of New York at Oswego, where he was a member of the Sigma Tau Chi fraternity. He was rescued after 22 hours, the 19th of 20 people pulled out of the rubble alive. Doctors kept him in an induced coma for six weeks. He underwent 27 surgeries and spent nearly three months in the hospital and rehabilitation. Four months after their rescue, McLaughlin and Jimeno, who both have since retired, took part in a ceremony at Ground Zero to watch as the final column was removed. When all the uniformed officers walked out of the pit, the last two were McLaughlin and Jimeno. On June 11, 2002, McLaughlin received the Port Authority's Medal of Honor. Will Jimeno was born on November 26, 1967 in Columbia but immigrated to New York City as a boy with his family. At the time of the attacks, he was a rookie cop assigned to the Port Authority bus terminal. He was pulled out of the rubble after 13 hours, the 18th of 20 people pulled out alive. On June 11, 2002, Jimeno received the Port Authority's Medal of Honor. Jimeno and McLaughlin make a cameo in the film. On January 2, 2008, Jimeno appeared on the television game show Deal or No Deal and won $271,000. Christopher Amoroso was born on June 1, 1972 and, raised in North Bergen, New Jersey where he attended North Bergen High School. Since 2010 the Chopper 2002 Foundation has presented their annual Invitational Softball Tournament in North Bergen on the first weekend of June. Dominic Pizzullo was born on August 15, 1965 in Italy to Dino and Victoria Pizzullo. He was named after his grandfather Domenico Pizzullo. Pizzullo taught auto repair, math and computer technology. After seven years as a teacher, Pizzullo became a police officer for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey Police Department 13 months before the attack. He was stationed at the Port Authority bus terminal. On September 9, 2005, all of the public safety officers killed on September 11, 2001, were posthumously awarded the 9-11 Heroes Medal of Valor by President George W. Bush. 
At the National 9-11 Memorial, Pizzullo is memorialized at the South Pool, on panel S29. In his birthplace of Giano Vetusto, Italy, a plaque has been erected on the door of the house he grew up in. David W. Carnes was born c. 1958 and spent 23 years in the Marine Corps Infantry. He left his accounting office at Deloitte & Touche in Wilton, Connecticut on September 11, 2001 soon after witnessing the attacks on television to assist in the rescue efforts. Khan spent nine days at the site before returning to his office. He then re-enlisted in the Marine Corps Reserve and went on to serve in the Philippines and Iraq. He served for 17 months, including two tours of duty in Iraq. Carnes did not cooperate in the making of Stone's World Trade Center movie due to Stone's antipathy towards U.S. President George W. Bush. Some critics took issue with the portrayal in the film. Rebecca Liss of Slate magazine observed, The film seems to overplay his zeal without conveying his motivations and reasoning. It notes he is unfairly portrayed as a robotic soldier of Christ, a little wacky and simplistic. Jason Thomas was born ca. 1974 and was dropping his daughter off at the home of his mother on Long Island when she told him about the attacks. Despite having left active duty in August 2001, Thomas drove to Manhattan to assist in the rescue efforts, telling the Associated Press, someone needed help. It didn't matter who. I didn't even have a plan. But I have all this training as a Marine, and all I could think was, my city is in need. As of 2013, Thomas is serving in the United States Air Force as a medical technician. His portrayal by a white actor in the film generated controversy, although the producers claimed that they were unaware that the real Thomas was black until they had already started filming. On February 11, 2007, Extreme Makeover, Home Edition aired a special two-hour episode about Thomas and his family. Following the attacks, Thomas and his wife had moved their four children from New York to Whitehall, Ohio. The house they bought began to deteriorate and the show intervened to help them. On September 2, 2013, Channel 4 broadcast The Lost Hero of 9-11 which detailed Thomas' involvement in the rescue operation following the collapse of both towers. As of 2018, Thomas was living in Whitehall, Ohio with his wife Kirsty and their children. He worked as an officer for the Ohio Supreme Court. Thomas is in 15 Septembers later which has appeared on the History Channel. Topic. Reception Topic. Box office On opening weekend, it made approximately $18,730,762 in the U.S. and Canada. In total, the film grossed $70,278,893 at the North American box office, and over $162,970,240 worldwide. Topic. Critical response The film received generally positive reviews from critics, with a 68% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes based on 229 reviews and an average rating of 6.7.10. The website's critical consensus states, As a visually stunning tribute to lives lost in tragedy, World Trade Center succeeds unequivocally, and it is more politically muted than many of Stone's other works. On Metacritic, the film has a score of 66 out of 100, based on 40 critics, indicating generally favorable reviews. The producers met with all relevant September 11th victims groups, before production began, to inform them of the intent. After its release, they, the NYPD, and the FDNY were very pleased with it. Former Mayor Rudy Giuliani, former Governor George Pataki and then Fire Commissioner Nicholas Scapetta, as well as representatives from the NY Port Authority, were at the premiere of the film at the Ziegfeld Theatre in Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> Home media 
The Region 1 DVD was released on December 12, 2006 with a Region 2 release following on January 29, 2007. A special two-disc set was also released. A three-disc deluxe edition was produced exclusively for Target stores. Although Paramount initially dropped its support of the Blu-ray format, it came to support Blu-ray again after HD DVD's demise. The film reappeared on Blu-ray in May 2008. Topic. See also List of cultural references to the September 11 attacks Collapse of the World Trade Center United 93, another 2006 film, directed by Paul Greengrass, which centered around the events aboard United Airlines Flight 93. List of firefighting films Whitewashing in film equals equals notes